how much pressure is there on Michigan because they are a favorite over a team that some feel like shouldn't be there. Some yeah, feels like they're, they're the heavy favorite. You, if Michigan loses, first of all, if any team loses to a big 12 team, it's the upset of college football playoffs yeah. in history. Yeah. It is. I mean, they have just got annihilated every time. Now the fact that Michigan has arrived the way that they have, right. And if you listen to what, Coach Harbaugh and the players said when they came last year, they were too involved in the events. They were happy to be there. The excuses are abound. No, you just got ran over by Georgia. But if you want to just dice it up that way, that's fine. But the way that they've arrived, beat the brakes off Ohio State, and then they went into the Big Big Ten Championship and, and won that one in, in you know Michigan fashion. Now you're playing a team that lost their Big 12 championship, and you are supposed to physically just – maul these guys if you so happen to do one the worst would be to lose two even if you win and it's a a bad win i guess by the optic standpoint now you are ready to, you're going to be teeing it up against a team that's going to be in better shape to beat you in the championship game even if it's a, even if it's ohio state because of somehow some way ohio state is able to get Georgia out of their element. And there's teams that's been able to do it. Mississippi did it. I think, was it South Carolina? Which one? Or was it Missouri? One of the teams was beating them at halftime. They end up beating them 26-22. Um, if, if Ohio State can get Georgia to play the way Ohio State wants to play and wins, Michigan's in trouble. They're in trouble. Because Michigan, it would be hard for them to play the perfect game again against Ohio State two times in a year. They played nearly perfect at Ohio State. They played nearly perfect last year at home. Three times in a row would be astronomical. Perfect. So they they have a lot more pressure on them because they are the odds-on favorite to win their game. They are the perceptive favorite to win that game. How can they lose this game? Um, they can lose this game. Well, first of all, it, it, they could lose this game by TCU winning this game. TCU can win this game um, by staying on schedule offensively, timely runs by their quarterback, efficient enough running game, and explosive plays by their wide receiver that has a distinct advantage over every single Michigan defensive back. Now, what has to happen is that offensive line has to play well for TCU. Then conversely, when they get on defense, it's going to be a la how TCU from old beat Wisconsin. They have to penetrate the line of scrimmage and get tackles for loss and not give the Michigan running backs and McCarthy clean running lanes. And it has to be for four quarters. If you look at the Nebraska game, in particular, like you say, Iowa, you can even look at times against Michigan in the first couple of series. You can't, when you play against a team like Michigan or with any like Illinois or any good running team, Georgia and Michigan, you know, specifically in this type of element, you have to be gap sound. You have to be violent and strong with your hands. And when you're slanting or you're stunting, you can't ju- you have to slant to where you're going and then you have to get your pad square. But the problem, but if TCU has been working on that, they'll be just fine. You know what I'm saying? This is one game. This ain't a time for you to be worn out and be tired because you're physically tired. You had time off. You, you had, had time off. You have a way to you, – you should be more than ready game plan. Now it's going to come down to execution. Can you ex- – and that's a, that's what Michigan makes you do in their running game. Makes you execute at an efficient rate, play in and play out. And if you don't, if you decide, oh, you know what, they went in the C-gap, but I'm supposed to be in the D-gap. Well, I'm going to dip into the C-gap. Well, that dude's just right around that D-gap up the sideline. And that Edwards can go house call on you. Well, but we saw what Kansas State did on the ground against TCU. Does that play? Does that transfer, it transfer into this oh, game? Oh, yeah. It can, and it can because Kansas State, with their run game and their quarterback run game at times, um, the RPO type of action, that mm-hmm. fits right into what Michigan has done. But I'd assume that the defensive coaches of uh, TCU has went back and did some self-scouting. But then, you know, they all not only self-scouted, because I'm assuming a lot of those run plays were 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 busts. Again, beating a team twice is hard. They came with a different game plan than before. So 
it's just going to come down to, you know, obviously who wants it more execution in the turnover, turnover battle. If they can get Michigan, get ahead of Michigan in a turnover battle, they're way ahead of schedule. Explosive plays. I'm telling you, they, they will get some explosive plays. But Michigan makes – the difference between this this year's team and last year's team that I've noticed, whereas they would they would body blow you, body blow you, and then kind of pull away late in the game. Mm-hmm. They body blow you, body blow you, knock you out quick, and then bludgeon you to the end of the game to make you remember it for weeks and weeks and weeks on a, 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 after. That's the difference. Now, what they've done historically over the last two years is they have been more aggressive – in their explosive plays on the outside as the season went on. And I don't know why teams haven't understood that. They've taken more shots after game five than any team in the Big Ten besides Ohio State for the last two years. Do you think them getting blown out last year in the playoff is in the back of their mind at all? That they, I mean, that was that was embarrassing. If they play Georgia. Well, I I, I thought I, I thought this I was more concerned about TCU not winning their champion their their conference championship game. I thought that was a, like if they had come into this thing having beaten Kansas State, mm. it's a different vibe. But uh, yeah, you put on tape your la- you're as good as your last performance, and that tape still lingers. It does. It, it but it's different circumstances because they were almost playing against. It, it's a different and, and this is I feel I I firmly believe. TCU should – I would have liked to see them win. I can understand why they didn't play as free and as loose as they had been because they looked like a totally different team. And then they turned it on in the end. They st- they were extremely tight because they were playing against themselves. You're playing against your whole success, which their track record of going on a beaten ranked team is different than any other Big 12 team. They've went, and they've been through it. They've won last-second games. They've won mm-hmm. on the road. They've won, you know, come back in games. They came back against Kansas State. And then to play a team that has essentially more on the line than you in a kind of a throw-off game was a little bit hard. And they saw USC lose, they which did. you went yeah. into. It. Yeah, they it, the mindset of seeing another team lose. And it, blow it. it. Yeah, and blow it. It puts a lot of pressure on you. Now, I still believe that it, they should have been able to cl- complete the mission. That's in the far back of their head. What is really in the front of their mind is not being able to get a yard on fourth and one. Yeah, and you're That's looking big. at and That's you're looking big. at teams that are physical. Are we physical enough? And what they'll learn, which sometimes happens down there in Nebraska, you you can't realize. Hey, you know, sitting there, me and DB looking at these dudes ain't really that good, <laughs> right? Or you know what I mean, <laughs> right? Like we can play with these dudes. You can't be in the second, third quarter, be like, okay, now we can start playing like you did against Kansas State, right? You got to come out and stab and throw that first punch and be like, yeah, okay, look, we here. And if they do it, they'll be just fine. I'm telling you, TCU led by their weight coach and led by their coach has has something different internally than a lot of Big 12 teams have had. Yeah. That's a team versus Kyler Murray, one player. The way it showed right, a, year, right. a year ago. That, yeah. All things are playing. We'll throw, yeah, it, yeah, we've been nice to him. We've been nice to, to Murray for a bit. We'll throw it a break. We'll come back. Uh, last segment of the first hour of Old School. 